The past year, Cincinnati Children's Hospital has been involved in testing a number of different COVID-19 vaccines. We started in May of 2020 with the Pfizer vaccine, and we were one of four sites in the country doing the phase one studies. And so after the dosing was decided, then we helped in the phase two, three, and enrolled uh, between that study and then the AstraZeneca study, about 1,400 people at Cincinnati Children's Hospital. They heard the word Operation Warp Speed, and they thought that that meant that you're gonna just go full speed ahead, it doesn't matter, we're never gonna stop. And that really wasn't what it meant. It just means trying to do things as expeditiously as possible. We've really telescoped things down and so we just put a lot more hours more quickly. The other thing that helped us is that these technologies, while it was new for them to apply them to the vaccine we're testing, they've been available for over 20 years. It allowed us to develop vaccines quickly and it allowed us to actually make lots and lots of doses very quickly. It was very important for us to be able to enroll a very diverse and broad spectrum population in our clinical trials. And the great news is that what we found in the Pfizer trials, and they've really found the same thing in Moderna and AstraZeneca and Johnson & Johnson is that the vaccines have had the same protective effect across the age spectrum. Also, there was no disparity in race and there was no disparity in sex. So in the end, age, sex, and race all had the same efficacy regardless of where you were on that spectrum. So many people have had no side effects, but if they're gonna have side effects, the common things is that it's a shot, so you're gonna get some pain or tenderness at the site, you may get some redness, sometimes a little bit of swelling. If you're gonna have any sort of total body side effects, the common things we've had are people had headaches, or they've had fatigue, maybe some achiness. Basically, if you think about like when you had a bad cold and how you kind of feel like that for a day. And a lot of people said, well, why do you get those side effects? And I think about that really as showing that our body is responding well to the vaccine because those side effects you're feeling are caused by components in our immune system called cytokines. And when those are being released, one of the side effects, unfortunately, is that you feel kind of achy and have the headache and sometimes even fever. You should look at that as an okay sign. To do testing in children, you have to show that there's a potential for direct benefit so that that child themselves, by participating in the study, has some benefit by being in the study. So to be able to show that we had potential for direct benefit, we needed to get data in adults first. Now we were able to accumulate data in adults and we showed that the vaccines were quite safe and they were very effective. And so that really allowed us then to go in and test in children. The first studies we did is, is to look at adolescents from 12 to 17. So we've seen that the adverse event profile there really has looked very similar to the adults. We're just finishing up on the immunogenicity and hopefully by the time you see me on this video, we'll actually have uh, results for you to be able to tell you. Based on those results, we're now starting to do testing in 12 years of age and below. I think what it's gonna mean is that by August, maybe a little bit earlier of 2021, we'll have one or more licensed vaccines for people 12 years of age and above. I think it will still be around a year from now, so maybe late 2021, early 2022, before we have vaccines licensed for under 12 years of age. What we've seen so far is that in vitro, in our test tubes, that the vaccines still have been quite effective against the variants. We're gonna see them, that's gonna happen. It may mean that this virus becomes part of our endemic viruses and that we're gonna need periodic boosters or we may need to add it to our routine pediatric vaccine schedule. I think it's a little bit too early to know about that and that maybe at the next PAS and hopefully in person, I can give you an update on that. And the great news is that the efficacy of the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccine has been 94, 95%, again, across the age group, that the AstraZeneca has been somewhere between 70 and 90%, and the Johnson & Johnson also has been around 75%. Typically when we're testing a vaccine, we lose one or two along the way, and that's why we really started with Operation Warp Speed is having multiple vaccine platforms with the hope of having one. Now we have the problem, a good problem, of probably having five that are gonna be available very soon. All the vaccines have worked well. All the vaccines have been tested rigorously, that the safety has looked good on all the vaccines, and that they've all performed extremely well, regardless of the demographics.